doing? My name's Tommy and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue. On today's show, we're gonna do a chuck roast. We're gonna do it low and slow at about 225, but I'd like to go over a couple things first. Now listen, I know there's a lot of people following this cooker and I have found a few issues with the cooker. Some I'll contact the uh, company and uh, see if they want to uh, comment on those at first before I uh, share them with you. And one of the issues is just the uh, that the, the company's obviously not gonna be able to do anything about, so it's up to us as uh, backyard cookers to uh, figure it out ourselves. And uh, one of the issues is that whole burn plate that sits underneath the uh, grates that the uh, food uh, sits very close to. And I did a brisket yesterday. You'll see that uh, video soon. It just gets too hot. Anything hot and fast, probably anything, uh, you know, over five, six hours cooking, it's just going to heat it up too much and it's probably just going to overcook the bottom of the food. Uh, listen, that's not a master built problem. That's basically a problem with most of these uh, new cookers uh, as far as pellets and uh, this uh, 5 or 60 right here. Uh, the problem is is the, the heat source is just uh, right under the food where on the old style gas grill the uh, heat is basically distributed uh, away from the food around the food with these types of grills and pellet grill the, the pot is just sitting right there uh, the meat is, is right over it and uh, that causes overcooking doesn't it so listen I've been talking to Kenny over at heavy metal barbecue and he's been busting me about using the uh, top grates so last night it hit me and I just did a roll test to confirm it. You'll see that video uh, later today or tomorrow. And I got an idea for today's cook, so you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for that. All right, so listen, so to sum it up, uh, there are a couple small issues with the grill, maybe some larger than others. That said, I'd like to give the uh, company uh, time to comment on those issues just to make sure that they're not uh, you know, just to make sure it's not user error on my part or maybe it's something that I didn't put together right on the grill. We're gonna cover that in the full video soon. Enjoy. All right, everybody, my name is Tommy and this is the Gallery of Backyard Barbecue. And listen, before we get going, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. All those are greatly appreciated and all those are very important to the show, right? Now listen, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this in live. Now listen, usually I like to layer a couple of different seasonings on this piece of meat here, but for today, but for I today, just right, I just want to keep it simple, right? I'm just going to go with a, uh, a Montreal steak seasoning. Anybody can get this anywhere, and you want to uh, season the meat quite literally, right? You got a nice, uh, pretty big chunk of beef here, so uh, you definitely want to, uh, what you would think, maybe over seasoning the meat. And obviously you want to get both sides of the meat. And I am running hickory wood in the smoker. I got it down on the bottom and I got it also uh, mixed in with the charcoal. That seems to be working well. Again, you want to get all uh, sides of this piece of meat. We're going to break this down. This is going to be a, a, an awesome, awesome meal, right? There we go. And this is also going to develop a nice, uh, nice bark. All righty, I'm going to mix a, a couple uh, chunks of hickory. My grill was running before, so you definitely want to be careful, right? And I'll also uh, top that off with some of my uh, Weber briquettes. And now remember, nothing engages till you uh, close up the uh, top and the uh, bottom door, right? I'm going to throw a couple chunks in there also. I'll uh, close that up. 
and we are going to run the uh, smoker at uh, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna jack the meat up on this uh, top grill grates. And listen, I think you can cook a, a brisket up here, right? That'll keep uh, all that heat away from here. It'll still distribute it nice. Now, if it was a brisket and we were going a little longer, you could even put this, uh, you could even put this plate underneath there. Maybe you could put this plate under there to catch some of the grip drippings to keep your grill clean. So there's many things you could do, right? Alrighty, and just like that, we are at the hour mark, right? I'm feeling underneath for a heat, feels pretty good. I'm gonna do a, a meat check, right? You wanna make sure your uh, your meat's not burning anywhere. I'll give it a little uh, spritz of my 50-50 uh, apple juice water, right? And uh, just like that, another hour and the same thing, right? You wanna uh, check for any uh, hot spots on the meat. If you have to uh, rotate the meat, move it over. Make sure your bark is setting up and then uh, hit it with another couple spritzes of that uh, apple juice uh, water mixture. And one thing about this uh, master build, is she does hold temperature quite well, right? 250 and she stayed right on it. And now listen, we're at the uh, four hour mark. I'm gonna do a, a meat check, a spritz, and a temp check, right? We've been sitting around that 170 for a good half hour, and I'm thinking we may be in the stall, right? Of course. And you know when you're in the stall, right, if your temperature doesn't move, so I'm just gonna probe it and make sure that I'm reading the uh, right proper temperature. good-looking piece of meat right there got a nice color that bark is setting up really really nice and we are probing really good and we are right about that 170 a mark that's a nice color on that meat right would you say uh, the bark is set up real uh, nice so what we want to do here is we want to get this off and we want to get this in our ajou mixture which is uh, one sliced onion Two to four cloves of garlic, one bouillon cube, and one cup of water, right? We're gonna uh, lay that meat on that, get it over to the side, and get it wrapped up, get it probed, and get it back on the uh, smoker. And I can tell already that this is gonna be uh, one awesome meal is that meat just is, is just looking good the fat content is rendering perfectly i mean this is going to be a good piece of meat and we'll get our uh, probe back in it get it sealed up nice and tight One of the things I like to do here is just get a uh, separate little piece, little strip of tin foil, right? Because we want to kind of block that little hole where the probe went in. Just kind of get as good a seal as we can get. And now look, we're going to bring this right up to the uh, 200 range. And if it's probing like butter, we know we're done. And listen, here's a little trick. I know when I pulled it off, I was in that 160 range, put my probe back in after I wrapped it and it showed 160, right? So I know my probe is sitting in a good spot. If it was say 140, then you know your probe's not uh, set right. Now listen, when you unwrap the meat after you hit the uh, stall, be careful because a lot of steam will come up 
and you can see we are in that 200 range and it took us about an hour and a half more to get there right not bad on a, a five and a half to a six hour cook and again you can uh, probe it for temperature but if she's moving like butter with hardly any resistance like that you know it's done What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this back on the grill for about 15 to 20 minutes. I just want to get that bark set again real nicely. Firm it up kind of, right? And just like that, we are done. So listen, what we want to do here is we want to get this back in the house, get it on a board. Unlike brisket, you don't not going to let it rest for an hour, two, three hours. You're going to get it right on a board. If you want to tent it like a steak for 10, 15 minutes, then go right ahead. I mean, that is a uh, gorgeous piece of meat right there. You can see the glycerin on top. You can see the uh, moisture content in that meat. And this is a, a home run. I can tell before I slice it. Oh, like butter. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, man, look at that. Wow. Smoke ring, nice. The moisture content, nice. I mean, uh, this is a home run. I could tell before I even taste it. And listen, what I'm going to do here now for the taste test, I'm going to go in alive. Enjoy. We're going to do one on screen camera taste test, and I'll tell you what, I nailed this one. It's all in picking out the proper chuck. This has a nice fat content. That fat content breaks down, renders, and forms juices that you just can't beat. Not for this price. So listen, I'm gonna take a, uh, I'm gonna take a nice slice right here. I want some of that au jus. Some of that onion, you definitely don't want to leave that out. Maybe a little piece of garlic. Oh, oh, oh. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Guys, this is one. This is one you definitely got to make. Beef chuck, cost you about 10 bucks. Pick one with a nice fat content, cook it that way with this as you, and you're all set. Oh, and for 560 owners, try that first level and let me know down in the comments below how it worked out for you. And listen, if you like this master built video, I'm gonna leave a couple here and here. You check those out, and we'll see you soon.